Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 10th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. It's Microsoft Patch Tuesday and uh, well with that, uh, let's get started talking about some of the vulnerabilities Microsoft addressed in today's update. There are a total of 157 vulnerabilities being addressed this month in total. Now, seven of them were known before today. These are Chromium vulnerabilities that affected Microsoft Edge. Out of the remaining 150 vulnerabilities, we have one important vulnerability that has already been exploited and has been made public before today. It's a proxy driver spoofing vulnerability. Haven't had a lot of luck finding details, even though it is labeled as being known and being made public before today. But that may just be a matter of not finding the right CVE or maybe the CVE number was not attached to some of the earlier reports. Now, we only got three critical vulnerabilities this month and all Critical vulnerabilities are affecting Microsoft Defender for IoT and they represent a remote code execution vulnerability. Another little odd thing is that we got about 40, and it's a little bit hard to count them all, uh, important vulnerability that all affect Microsoft OLE drivers for SQL servers. Now, when I read this first, it's a remote code execution vulnerability. I was a little bit surprised that it's rated as important, not critical. However, that rating makes sense when you're looking at some of the details. This does not affect the server at all. It affects the clients. And in order for this to be exploited, a client has to be connecting to a malicious server that then returns crafted data that can then lead to this remote code execution. So not a tricky exploit to pull off. And again, not really affecting the server. A couple other sort of things of interest here. There are four vulnerabilities being addressed in the DHCP server service. Two of them are denial of service vulnerabilities. Two are remote code execution vulnerabilities. All are rated important. There are some Intel branch history injection issues uh, being addressed. A good number of Azure issues uh, being addressed in these updates as well. And then we have another a good block of vulnerabilities, 24 of them that are secure boot security feature bypass vulnerabilities. All of them rated important, which is uh, typical for these type of security feature bypass vulnerabilities. And finally, uh, don't overlook uh, seven vulnerabilities in the Windows DNS server service. Uh, these are remote code execution vulnerabilities, but it appears that exploitation may be tricky. It states here in the advisory that a network-based attacker would need to have privileges to query the domain name service, which is really not that much of a privilege. If the timing of DNS queries is perfect, the attacker could execute code remotely on the target server. Definitely worth watching these vulnerabilities. At this point, not a lot of detail available as to the actual nature of the vulnerability. So overall, a large number of vulnerabilities, but many of them are in these blocks around uh, SQL Server and so lots of vulnerabilities, but realize that many of them are part of these big blocks around secure boot and the SQL server only driver, and then finally the DNS server. So I would rate this a slightly more than average uh, patch Tuesday. And again, only three critical vulnerabilities, all of them in a single product. But as usual, we have more than just Microsoft vulnerabilities to talk about. The first issue is something that I probably should have covered earlier this week. It's a currently exploited vulnerability in dealing NAS devices. Sadly, this affects older devices that are end of life. And as a result, no patch is expected. A particular URL can be reached via a backdoor user message bus with no password. And then this URL can be used to execute arbitrary commands. 
All you need is essentially a quick GET request to the particular URL, add the command that you want to execute, Base64 encoded, and you're all set for complete remote code execution. As usual, I always tell you, don't expose these devices to the internet. And talking about devices that should never be exposed to the internet, Bitdefender is writing about four different vulnerabilities in LG's smart TVs running WebOS. The two most important vulnerabilities here, in my opinion, are first of all, uh, authorization bypass vulnerability that allows an attacker to add arbitrary users to the TV set. And well, once the attacker has that user set up, they can use a second vulnerability to escalate privileges to root for that particular user. Patches are available from LG for these vulnerabilities. Now, as part of their blog, Bitdefender also published some Shodan data about how many of these devices are exposed. Uh, apparently, something like 90,000, with the majority of them happening to be exposed in Korea. And that's it for today. All the vulnerabilities we had time for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks to everybody who came to my talk today. And apparently there's supposed to be a recording available. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.